standing right here in front of you. And so, now without further ado, I would like to give you my 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 impression of Elvis Presley. Here, one second. <laughs> Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Elvis Presley, and I am world-renowned for songs like this. I'm all shook up. Uh-huh. Uh-uh-uh. Yeah. I'm all shook up. Okay, now, I just want to get your guys' opinion. How was that? You know, it sounded just like Elvis Presley, right? Right? No? 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 I'm shocked. I thought I did him really good. Man, you guys are honest, but... Well, you know, obviously anybody who knows anything remotely about Elvis... You know, well, you know, I stutter, you know, but... It's all right. You know, but, you know, anybody who knows anything remotely about Elvis about Elvis Presley would say that, yeah, that was the worst impression of the king that we've ever seen, right? And yet I've spent my life endeavoring to live for Jesus Christ. I have esteemed myself to be a child of God, but anybody who knew anything remotely about Jesus Christ could have said, that was the worst impression of the king that we have ever seen. And yet so often throughout my life, I've been reminded though that as the people of God and as his sons and daughters, that is exactly what we are called to do. And that is exactly what we are all called to be. You know, in the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul writes, writes a church there in that city of Ephesus. And he says, therefore be imitators of God. He says, let all bitterness and wrath, let all anger and slander be put away from you, along with all forms of malice. And be kind to one another, be tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God and Jesus Christ has also has forgiven you. And then after saying that, he makes that statement, therefore, be imitators of God as his beloved children. See, it's not that we merely become converts of Jesus Christ. It's not that we become members of God's church, as important as all of that is. It's not that we are merely attenders of a worship gathering. But what is far more important is that we become the impersonators of Jesus Christ. And yet it's hard for us to really understand that word, imitators, because our concept of imitators is what we see Every year at Christmas time, we see all of these Kris Kringle impersonators everywhere that we go, right? You know, every year my wife has an uncle who every time that we all have, you know, every year that we have a gathering at Christmas time, she's got an uncle who always has, you know, the red suit on and the beard and all the kids come to him. And he does a very good job at it. You know, I can never be that because I'm, you know, because I'm way too skinny and, and because I stutter, but still. You know, he does a really good job of being Santa Claus. And yet, once all of those kids have gone home every year, he gets out of that red suit. He takes the white beard off and he goes right back to being who he really is after that gathering has commenced. And, you know, in the same way, there are a lot of people in this world who are, you know, who esteem themselves to be Christians who are doing some absolutely horrible things in this world in the name of Jesus. You know, I love coming here because I don't know what your struggles are spiritually, but, you know, in the cathedrals and in the stained glass windows, a lot of places where I have been and have heard about, you know, the struggle is, is that we just go through all of these religious rituals, right? It's no longer a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's a relationship with, with you know, rules and regulations. Where all that we do sometimes is we get into a suit on Sunday morning. We go through all of our religious rituals, 
And we play the role of the Christian, of, of the devout, God-fearing man or woman. And then after that service has concluded and culminated, we, we get out of that suit. And we take off the mask and we go right back to being who we really are outside of that cathedral. He says, therefore, be imitators of God as his beloved children. You know, as he says, be imitators of God, it's not that we are acting like something that we're not, as we want to be just like our God. That is what an actor is. In fact, that is where the word, a word that we, we hear many times in our culture is the word hypocrite. That is where that word has come from. As we might know, a, a hypocrite is a person who is very fake. He's very good at wearing the mask and at acting the part and at dancing the dance. And yet, ultimately, it is not the real thing. And you know, there were a lot of actors you know, a lot of religious actors who Jesus encountered. He said that when you pray and when you fast and when you give to those who are poor, don't be like the hypocrite sounding a trumpet saying, everybody, I'm fasting, look at me, look at how righteous I am, I am praying so wonderfully. He says that the hypocrites or that the actors are just doing that for the glory of other human beings. You know, when we read, be imitators of God, it's not that we are, are acting like we are something that we're not and then dropping the act at the end of the play. But really what this means is that we start becoming like God. Now, it's not that we are going to all become gods in and of ourselves. That is not what that is saying at all. But rather what that means is that as we walk in the footsteps of God, that now we are going to start loving the exact same things that Jesus Christ loves. That we're going to start actually hating those very things that he hates. That we're going to treat every single person who we lay our eyes on, whether they are friends, enemies, outcasts, luminaries, we're all, we are going to treat them all in the way that Christ Jesus would, you know, how he would view those individuals. It means going those places where he would go. It means thinking the way that he would think and actually